Joshua Denoyer. You're watching the 97.5 Praise FM live show. With me is Randy Caswell and Dave Davenport. Hey, guys. How's it going? Listen, if you want to see more of this podcast, listen more to this podcast. We're in episode five. If you want to hear one through four, go to mypraisefm.org. Listen to the podcast. You can download that for free for, for your listening pleasure. Hey, guys. How's it going? Doing pretty good, Josh. How are you doing today, buddy? Doing well. Doing well. Um, so, doing well. It's raining down here in Tennessee. Yeah, it's pretty cloudy here. Not raining, but it's cloudy. I say the weather's uh, kind of mild. It's like in the high 40s, would you say so? Was that around uh, here, Josh? It's about 37. We're, we were, yeah. we were, we dodged a bullet with the snow. We were supposed to get some snow, but we'll, we have, we can probably get some tonight. Sand about three inches tonight, so. Hey, Dave, we'll what's see. the temperature down there in Tennessee? It's in, it's in the, about the fifties. Not it's bad. No, not it ain't bad. bad. You can't complain. It's just raining. It's dark. Yeah. It's dark out, and I got. If you, you can probably hear it in the background, but you can hear because I got a gutter that sits out right outside my window so you can hear the water <laughs> <laughs> but in that case people are going to either have to go to the restroom or they're going to be able to get some rest you know the, the beating rain you know the yeah, oh, <laughs> relaxation yeah. type of oh, stuff oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> and uh and uh hey josh we're going to be uh starting our bible study here in acts chapter nine and uh can you tell the the audience where they can go because uh if we kind of repeat all the stuff that we've been talking over, it takes about a good five, seven, eight minutes. And it takes a, quite a bit of our time. So can you pass on to where they can go and um, sure. and to find that information out? Sure. Uh, I'm going to put up here on the screen. This is the YouTube channel. If you want to visit there, you can. Uh, YouTube channel, 97.5 Praise FM on YouTube. If you want to listen on the uh, website, go to mypraisefm.org. All the uh, podcast audio is there. I believe it's free to download. Correct? Yeah, you can you can download the them onto your uh, whatever you have onto your computers, on your okay. laptops, onto your cell phones. Uh, you'll be able to do that. One other thing is we do have them on our First Assembly of God webpage uh, mm -hmm. to FirstAssemblyGodChurch.org. You'll okay. be able to hear those. So uh, we have them archived. It's going to be a. It's <laughs> we're just looking forward to it. It's it's pretty great. And so uh, how about we uh, start into the study today? Are you ready to go, guys? Sure, absolutely. Okay, we're going to start out in the book of Acts chapter 9 because we're coming to the point where, uh, we're coming to the point where Paul uh, begins to, uh, he, he's been, he comes to know Jesus Christ. He, he's on the road to Damascus. He comes to follow after him, believes that the Jesus is Messiah because Jesus comes and reveals himself to him. Ananias, one of the disciples of Jesus Christ, comes. And uh, first of all, I love it because he says, Brother Saul. Here, Paul was once an enemy of the gospel. He was once an enemy of Jesus Christ. And I mean, uh, of, the, of the church. And now one of the church brothers comes to him. The first thing he says is, Brother Saul. I just love that. It just shows the grace of God. Then he uh, prays for him. He said, the Lord sent me here that you would be filled with the Holy Spirit and, um, and, and to be water baptized. And that's exactly what happened. Paul, they laid hands upon him. The Bible it records that he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And then Paul was uh, water baptized and and baptized in water and became a true follower of Jesus Christ. What we want to go to is what happened next. Now, if it was me. Now, the other part is you have to understand that just in the natural. If it was me in the natural, I, I would have went to try to meet with the apostles. I would have went to try to meet with... Uh, with Peter or Peter with James or the different ones, I would definitely try to reach out to them to try to meet them, to tell them what Jesus Christ has done in my life. But but Paul didn't do that. That's yeah. it's kind of for me. I think it's kind of unusual uh, that he didn't do that. It's a it's quite amazing. You can find it in the book of Galatians, chapter one, the verses fifteen through seventeen, where Paul he doesn't go north or go south to Jerusalem. But he goes to Arabia and he camps out with him and the Lord out in the wilderness. And, and he spends time with the Lord there. Uh, do you have that up on the screen that we can read that? It's Galatians. Or we don't have to have it on the screen, but I mean, we can read that. But it's Galatians uh, chapter 1, uh, verses 15. Let, let's not go with 15. I know we have it on the screen there, but let's go in verse number 10 to 17. 
This is what the apostle writes. He's writing to the church of Galatia. And he says, am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel I preach is not of human origin. I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. For if you have heard of my previous way of life in Judaism, how intensely I persecuted the church of God and tried to destroy it. I was advanced in Judaism beyond many of my own age and among my people and was extremely zealous for the traditions of my father. But when God, who set me apart from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his son in me so that I might preach him among the Gentiles, my immediate response was not to consult any human beings. I did not go up to Jerusalem to see those who were, who were apostles before I was, but I went to Arabia, and later I returned to Damascus in Galatia. That's in, um, I'm sorry, in Damascus. Um, I just think that's a really amazing thing, hmm. that Paul is now a believer and a follower of Jesus. He's filled with the Holy Spirit, and he's even been water baptized, identifying his whole life with Christ. Instead of going up to Jerusalem and talking to the apostles, the ones that traveled with Jesus for three to three and a half years, um, he goes to Arabia and he said, I was taught by Jesus. I was taught by him in, in Arabia. And doesn't that just kind of one way kind of, I think it really shows the direction that he had in his life. All mm -hmm. of a sudden now he he's listening to the Holy Spirit because I, I got a feeling that's a prompting of the Holy Spirit that's mm -hmm. saying, uh, don't go there, because wouldn't it seem natural just to go to Jerusalem? What do you guys think? Well, it it would seem natural, but I think um, in Paul's wisdom, number one in Galatians, in this in this passage we read in Galatians, he says that he learned it not he he wasn't taught it, he didn't learn it by man, he learned it by revelation of Jesus Christ, which was very very important because uh, he didn't want to. There was something else we had read last week, and like I said, it's in the it's in the podcast and previous episodes where we we we've, we've talked about. Uh, he didn't want to build on any other person's foundation, which I think is very important, because then that would indicate that he was taught something. If you build something on someone else's foundation, but he's saying he learned it from Jesus Christ, and so he's getting it from the source. He's getting his teaching from directly from the Lord, not from. Uh, the Lord's teaching to Ananias, not from the Lord's teaching to Peter, not from the Lord's teaching to John. He's getting it directly from the Lord. And as we learn things from other people, other people uh, can put their own feelings, their own thoughts, their own uh, understandings in things. Although some, some, sometimes it changes meaning, sometimes it doesn't. But it's important that he said he learned it directly from Jesus because that's that's the true source. And he didn't. He didn't. He didn't want to build on any other foundation. He didn't want to build on any other thing. He wanted it from the Lord, and that's very important for his beginning of his ministry because now he's got the Lord's, the directly the Lord's teaching, not John's teaching of the Lord's teaching, or not Peter's teaching of the Lord's teaching. He's got the Lord's teaching, and I think that was very, very important for that, for his start in ministry. Hey, Dave, don't you think that's amazing that uh, Paul did not go up to Jerusalem to talk to the apostles? That just kind of blows my mind in one way. Well, I, uh, you know, Paul talks, Paul talks about being led by the spirit. I think it's just like Christ. And he, he knows the voice of Christ now. He knows the voice of God. He's just had an, a, an experience with him, an encounter, and he knows this voice. And I, I, some, after you've had an experience like that, you, uh, you're pretty sensitive to the spirit. And I think that the spirit led him there and he followed. Um, he talks, a, he talks a lot about that in Galatians, uh, five, uh, five 16 says, walk by the spirit and, uh, you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. Um, I mean, that would be flesh telling me to, Hey, I got to go justify myself before all the apostles in, in Jerusalem. It, mm -hmm. uh, you get down to uh, verse 25 in, Gal in Galatians 5. He says, 
if we live by the spirit, let us also walk by the spirit. And, uh, you know, I think from, a, from right on, you know, from the very beginning, he, uh, he, he learned to follow the spirit. Could you imagine what that must have been like? Because uh, he was a zealous for the law, what it says right here in Galatians, and he was zealous in Judaism and for the the traditions of his father. And and now, but he but he was rejecting the Messiah. He was rejecting the hope of Israel, the promise of Israel. He was rejecting all that. But now he's in the right faith. He's in the right heart, the right attitude. Can you imagine what that would have been like, his prayer life? And how all of a sudden everything changes and, and he's hearing God's voice and hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit and, and he's filled with the Holy Spirit. And, 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 you know, I think we can't underestimate that this was three days of fasting, three days of praying, three days of seeking God. And I bet you God was talking to him. And I bet you God, I mean, he said to Ananias, I'm going to show you. Uh, he showed him Ananias and coming and praying for him. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's receiving revelation from god from the very beginning he's yeah. hearing the voice of the lord and i really do believe just like like you were talking about is the reason he didn't go up to uh jerusalem is it would have been natural to do that but paul's not living on the natural level he's listening to what the holy spirit is saying and, it, and he's uh pouring his life out to to god and, and just doing what god tells him to do and see, that's, what I, that's what i find interesting because if you if you look at Paul's life, I mean, he was he was uh, a Pharisee. He learned that he knew the law, and and I'm sure he felt like we've talked before in these in these podcasts. He felt like he was doing the will of the church. He felt like he was doing the will of God by persecuting the church. Could you imagine that chasm that that um, cat cataclysmic tra traumatic experience of of that experience of 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 meeting Jesus that way, and how now. He's thinking, man, I'm wrong. His whole mind turns, man, I'm wrong. They were right. And just the whole thought pattern of that being, that's a, that's a cataclysmic, you know, turnaround. And it's one of those things that for, for, for him to follow the Lord in that way, that, that in itself is kind of a mess up kind of messed up because in, in pro, pro, probably in his own mind because he thought he was following god by persecuting the church and now he's saying now he's having to to turn his mind 180 degrees so to speak and follow god on a different path and not persecute the church but to embrace the spirit of god to embrace this new way of thinking and to go excuse me to go from there so well, that that had to be some that I mean, could you imagine the turmoil at first in his mind? Well, yeah, he just had a supernatural experience. He's just met God. And what Ezekiel promises in in uh, Ezekiel 36 took place. He got a new heart. He got a new heart. He got a heart that desires God, not a heart of stone. He, he had in yeah. his unregenerate state, all of us in our unregenerate That's state right. have a heart of stone. Mm -hmm. Um, so he, he, he's got a new heart now and then God puts his spirit in him mm -hmm. so that he will follow his ordinances and mm -hmm. walk in them. And under the law uh, the law is an external thing. You, you do things because you have to do it for fear of God, for fear of punishment, for fear of whatever, for fear, you know, and mm -hmm. you do it because that's what is required of you, even though you're not doing it willingly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's how Paul says the law is spiritual because it, what's required of us in the law is to do it willingly to have a heart that does it and that when he gives us that new heart and he puts his spirit in it then i desire to do those things it's not i do them begrudgingly i don't do them because well that's the right thing to do i don't do it because it's a learned process that is you know because you know it, it, it's not an external it's not a matter of fulfilling external things. And Paul knows that. And Paul's just had, he's just had got a new heart and he's got God's spirit in him. And he has come into the understanding 
that it's following the spirit and God's just changed him. And now he has the thirst for God. He has the desire for God. He has the desire to please God from the inner man, not externally, mm -hmm. because even though we do the right things, a lot of times we do it begrudgingly. And that is not what the law is about. The law is about us doing. That's how Paul says in Romans, I, what is it? Seven, where he says the law is spiritual, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. because the law is spiritual, but it, it's, it's meant to bring us to Christ and bring us to the person because only through the spirit can we do that. When God says, you know, when Jesus says that the most important, the, the, the greatest of the commandments is to love, to love the Lord, thy God with all, all your heart, soul, and mind. How do you do that? You can't do it. I can't do it. You know, I don't seek for God in an unregenerate way. I only seek God when the spirit comes into me, when he gives me a new heart. Well, first he cleanses me and then he puts a, he puts a, a new heart, gives me a new heart and he puts his spirit within me. That's the only way I can observe the law, the way it was meant to be, because it's now I desire to do it. It's not that I have to do anything. Um, it's not that I have, I, I'm doing it because that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm doing it because that's what I desire now, because I have a new heart and I have the spirit that leads me. And it's all out of, it's, he's given me the desire to do these things. And he's written it on my heart. You know, Jeremiah talks to you, he'll write the law on our heart. He's written that law on my heart. It's now part of me. It, it's not this external thing of me doing it because, well, I got to do that in order to go to heaven. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter anymore. I don't love people. I don't love people because, well, I, I got to tolerate them. You know, I truly love them. I truly have empathy for them now. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's a, it, it's a totally different dynamic than, than what we're used to. And Isaiah tells us, you know, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And you can't comprehend this until God reveals it to you mm -hmm. until you've experienced yourself because only through the experience do you ever, do you ever get this? You know, I mean, I could sit there and read it forever and then, you know, and make a list of things that I got to check off to do and checking that box ain't getting me to heaven because that's not from faith because I only get the new, I get a new heart and I get his spirit in me through faith, faith mm -hmm. in Jesus Christ who gave himself for me. Mm -hmm. And and that's mm -hmm. the only way that happens. It never happens by, you know, Paul, Paul in Galatians two asks, you know, did you start by the spirit? And now you're finishing by the law. No, mm -hmm. it's not, you know, I, I didn't get saved. And then all of a sudden I have to follow all these rules and regulations and I can do certain things and I can't do anything because when I started by the spirit, he started to direct me. He started to lead me mm -hmm. and he made my heart mm -hmm. desire him. And now I do it with a very sincere heart that desires God and the way I get it, and you know, Jesus said, you know, if, if you want to know the if the teachings, the will of God, you got to do it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, mm -hmm. and building on the rock, you know, he talks about the man that build on the sand and the man that build on the rock. And what, what is the man that builds on the rock? He who hears these words and puts them into action. Not, That's right. it's not that I, I said, okay, I'm building on Jesus Christ. I'm not in the sand because the man that builds on the sand doesn't know he's building on the sand. The man that's building on the sand right. is the guy that says, oh, I'm building on, I, I got my relationship with Christ. You know, I believe in Christ and that's it. But he says, he who hears these words and does not put them into practice is like the man who built on the sand. It's because I don't, I didn't put them into practice. I never let the spirit come and lead me. Mm -hmm. That's, that's building on the sand. I'm never mm -hmm. led by the spirit. I'm doing it in my own. It's dead works. And the man that built on the rock is the one who hears the words of Christ and puts them into action because I have faith in him to do his work in me, to put, to give me a new heart, to put his spirit in me and to lead me. Amen. Amen. And that's exactly what happened with Paul. All of a sudden the Holy Spirit came abide, lives in sight. The Holy Spirit begins to direct his path and begins to, uh, to tell them. And he tells them to go to Arabia and he spends time there. And as he spends his time with the, the Lord, the Lord begins to reveal this uh, this uh, New Testament of grace, um, this uh, work of grace in the life of people, uh, life, life uh, of God. And I think that's a, a powerful thing. Paul goes and he spends his time in Arabia and, 
and he's receiving revelation. We were talking about, you were saying the cataclysmic change, Josh, can you imagine the excitement it would be that he knows God mm-hmm. and, and he's hearing the voice of the Lord and he's actually hearing God, hearing him mm-hmm. clearly. And, and, mm-hmm. and Jesus is uh, teaching him things and teaching him the, the grace. That's what Paul said. This, uh, this message that I'm preaching, it's not out of human origins. And he said, I didn't receive it from any man. I received it from Jesus himself mm-hmm. by a revelation of the Lord. I'm telling you, that's a powerful place. How many, I mean, like guys, when we're growing in the Lord, isn't it neat when the Lord shows us something? Isn't it neat when the Holy Spirit gives us a wisdom and understanding? It's a powerful thing. Okay, you know, I was wondering, as I'm thinking, and I always think, and my ministry is one of where I take the scripture and I put it upon myself and the mirror upon myself and wonder, put myself in the situations. And, you know, when you're thinking about Paul and you're thinking about his life and how he didn't go right to the apostles, but he went to, he got away from everybody. He got away from distraction. He got away from anything. And, you know, just like Jesus did, he got away. You know, he was he was led out into the desert away from everybody. And the enemy tempted him and all those things. And that was the the proving ground for him. Paul got away from everybody to learn from God, to learn from the spirit so that he wasn't building on anyone else's foundation or anything else. He was he says in there that he was revelation of Jesus Christ not taught by man, not given by man, not taught by man at all. But we know that Paul had a thorn in the flesh. And we wonder, I always wondered my own thinking, what was that thorn in the flesh? What was the, was it spiritual? Was it physical? Was it emotional? Was it even anything at all like that? Was it something else? And I always wonder, you know, within my own experiences, now the, now what I'm going to, what I'm going to interject here is not found in the scripture. So don't go try to find it in the scripture because it's not there. It's not indicated in the scripture at all. Paul does not indicate this, but this is my thinking and my my own rationale and my own contemplating on the life of Paul. And in my own experience, I find that in times when God does something for me, the enemy comes in like a flood and tries to discredit God. And I wonder, even though it's not 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 said in the scripture and not indicated in the scripture, I wonder what kind of battle Paul had to do to to keep that mindset that he was that he trusted God because I know I battle I battle on a regular basis with what did you know did God really do what he did and I'm going to tell you a story it just just came to mind I'm going to tell you a story my son Ezekiel he's six years old my son Ezekiel was born with a heart condition when he was born he had you know how the arteries on the heart have one artery on one side and one artery on the other side, and they go around and they pump blood through your body. Well, my son, in his heart, had two arteries out of one side. Now, we have documented proof that there was two arteries on one side, no arteries on the other side. Two arteries on, I believe, was the right side, no arteries on the left side of his heart. Documented MRI proof, okay? We brought it to to the Lord. We brought it to and the Lord... We, we prayed and we, we brought him to the Lord. We did these things. We wanted a second opinion. They said, go up to Chicago. We went to Chicago. After about three weeks of praying and bringing him before the Lord, we did another ultrasound thing. And there was one artery on the left side, one artery on the right side. And they showed us this picture. And they showed us the previous picture two arteries on one side, no arteries on the other side. Now there was one artery, one artery. And so we have documented proof. Now, God did something there. God moved. God did something. God changed my son's life and healed my son. Now, believe me, the enemy came in like a flood and said, maybe they were wrong. Maybe that was wrong. Maybe there was really nothing wrong and it was something with their machine. So I wonder, you know, within my own experience... Paul met Jesus. Paul Paul encountered the living God firsthand. Can you imagine just, and like I said before, multiple times, it's not indicated or said in scripture of any kind of doubt or anything like that. But could you imagine the onslaught the enemy tried to put on Paul? Just because the enemies tried to put on me, my son isn't really healed. Could you imagine... And this is just my thinking because my own my own understanding, my own thing, you know, 
my son's really healed. God really healed him multiple times. The enemy is brought to my attention. No, their 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 machine was wrong. You know, their 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 stuff was wrong. They were they were mistaken. If I wouldn't have had that documented proof that the, of those MRI images, sure there'd be doubt there. And I think Paul, if Paul would not have encountered Jesus Christ in the way he did, there might have been there might have been in my own thinking now an opportunity, not that there was, but an opportunity for doubt to creep in. Had he not encountered Jesus in the way he did. Does that make sense? It does. You know, sometimes you think about it. Uh, even in Eden, the devil asks us questions. I mean, he asks him, did God say this? Did God do that? And we can, um, we can sometimes know the will of God and we can then begin to, even ourselves in our own flesh, ask questions. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I've experienced the same thing. You know, I, I've had... <clears throat> I had an encounter with God that, you know, changed my life that I knew he, he was real and he knew my name. And, you know, I mean, I've shared that with people, but, um, uh, you know, a week removed, I started to doubt that it really happened the way it did, even though I, I mean, I, I knew what happened, but I'm like, well, was I really thinking that, you know, did, did those things really get said? Um, you know, because is time passes, you know, it's not quite as clear as it was. Well, God immediately gave me another experience, but this time it was, it, it was documented, you know, because I had a, I recorded things in my phone, you know, and I had other witnesses on other parts of it, you know, so I got, you know, so there's no denial, mm -hmm. you know, he, he did come and confirm it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I hear people talk about the, um, talk about Paul's thorn in the flesh, mm -hmm. you know, and you know that the, it, the thorn in the flesh isn't a punishment it's not anything else you know the thorn in, the thorn in the flesh was to um keep him humble mm -hmm. uh you know i and i i know that i know that for sure in in second corinthians 12 he says because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations for this reason to keep me from exalting myself there was given me a thorn in the flesh a messenger from Satan to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. Concerning this, I implored the Lord three times that it might leave me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Most yeah. gladly, therefore, I will rather boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am well content with weakness with weaknesses, with insults, with distress, with persecutions, with difficulties for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong.